Uh, thank you, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Education meeting. It is uh, Monday, April 3rd. Um, just a quick housekeeping item, if I may call, um, in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975 announcement, I wish to announce that the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the School District of the Chathams Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the time, date, the place thereof posted in the Board of Administrative Offices, sent to the clerks of the Chatham Borough, Chatham Township, the Library of the Chathams, the Chatham Courier, the Daily Record, the Star Ledger, and the Alternative Press. Mr. DeQuilla, would you mind doing roll call? No, no, Mr. Gilfillan, Mr. Arnick. Yes. Ms. Chigarelli. Here. Ms. Clark. Here. Mr. Connors. Here. Ms. Curley. Ms. Kenny. Here. Mr. Valenti. Here. And Ms. Weber. Here. Seven president of the council. Excellent. Um, if those that are able, would you please join, stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, thank you all for coming. Um, hopefully parking wasn't nearly as tight as it was on March 6th, and you were all able to get a spot. You are all able to get a seat tonight, so that's lovely. Um, just quickly, I know most of you are here because of the recent media attention that Chatham is receiving. And again, I don't want to dwell on it too much further, as you know, most of you are at the March 6th meeting, and we've already covered this topic at fairly great length. And um, talked about the curriculum, and I, I certainly urge everybody to go back to that link and look at the March 6th meeting as often as possible if you have any questions about the curriculum. Um, but just quickly, I just want to go through and, you know, dispel a couple of the statements that were made um, by, by this group out in Michigan. Again, they're claiming that there's still promotion of Islam in the district. There's no promotion of Islam. Um, there's indoctrination, no indoctrination. They mentioned that the administration was clueless. Clearly, there was about 200 people here last week that said they weren't clueless. Again, this is somebody from Michigan calling our administration clueless, so it's not, it's not coming from local, uh, local folks. The local support was quite clear on March 6th that they want the administration to keep the course. Um, the comment said that the, the students are getting a false de depiction of Islam. Not false, it's an even balanced depiction of all of the major world religions. Um, this group said they're on a campaign to stop Islamic doctrinization. Well, good news, you can stop because there's no Islamic doctrination, so you can put that to bed as well. It also says that only one religion is taught to the exclusion of all others. Not true. As you saw from Mr. May's lengthy presentation, we cover all of the major religions. And again, they go on to say that they're going to continue to fight the Islamic doctrinization now taking place in Chatham again. Rest easy, there is no indoctrinization taking place. Um, just a few other comments. I notice in the papers a lot of people are commenting that, you know, people have the right to ask questions. Well, of course everybody has the right to ask a question. People ask questions all the time. I mean, other than asking questions, really nobody shows up at our board meetings. So everybody has the right to ask a question. We welcome questions. Nobody's ever prohibited from talking at the podium. Um, and this particular topic, though, I don't think there's any outstanding question. The question was asked, would you please modify the curriculum to remove a piece of <coughs> you know, teachings. That was answered. Michelle Clark, as the curriculum chair, said that we reviewed it. We're not modifying it. Dr. LaSusa reviewed it, not modifying it. We covered it again on March 6th, and the school district of the Chatham is, is going to continue to follow the state standard in social studies. Again, the state standard in social studies 6.2 calls for the students to compare and contrast the tenets of various world religions, their patterns of expansion, their responses to current challenges in globalization. That's the state standard. That's the standard that we're going to continue to follow. We cover all of the world's religions, Islam being one of them, Buddhism, Christianity, Confucianism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Taoism. So we will continue with the state standards and expose the students to the, all the tenets of the various world religions. Again, as Mr. Mayor pointed out several times, the exposure as in, is a very academic manner. It is not devotional. It's often embedded in, in lessons on either the Middle East or the Far East in that particular grade. Um, it's embedded in, obviously, world history. Um, Christianity is prevalent in our world history stu studies. But again, I have to encourage you all, 
instead of reading a headline or a website, just go to the March 6th website, the presentation that Steve Mayer did. I believe, Sal, you said it was at between minutes 10 and minutes 20? 10 and 46. Okay, you'll cut out my good part at the beginning, but hey, if you want to cut to the chase, <laughs> go to minutes 10 and you can see Steve Mayer's. Again, it was a, a, an excellent presentation and it's really a, a good insight as to the time of dedication that the supervisors, the, the team leads, and the <coughs> teachers put into building the curriculum and reviewing it year over year. And again, some things get swapped in, some things get swapped out, so it, it's a process. Um, so again, I encourage you to go back to March 6th if you have any questions. Um, that, that should clear it up once again. So again, that's just, um, just wanted to do a little housekeeping there. I didn't have any additional comments so that we can, I'm sorry, did any other board member have any comment on, on that particular topic? Or Again, I don't want to belabor it, I just think we covered it quite sufficiently on March 6th. Everybody's good? Good, okay, excellent. Uh, then we're going to move right along to the administrative report. Uh, Dr. LaSousa, if you would. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Uh, first off, I'd like to congratulate all the students and staff members and cast and crew and everyone else involved uh, in the musical. The Adams Family, it was really a showstopper. I'm sure I'm stealing Mr. Arnock's thunder, but it was <laughs> uh, a tremendous, tremendous production and very, very impressive. Um, Second, uh, just a brief enrollment update. So we're closing in on having roughly the same number of kindergartners next year that we have currently. Uh, if we project out and, and look at what usually happens in the summer, we should be you know, right in the same ballpark. And ditto with first grade, if we receive um, additional first graders who move into the district between now and September 1st, we'll be about the same level we are now. Uh, the dynamic that's playing out and continues to play out in the district is that Southern Boulevard School continues to gain students, whereas Milton Avenue School and Washington Avenue School uh, are both contracting a little bit. So uh, over the past uh, five years, roughly, we've added programs at times to Southern Boulevard School, special education programs, and we're getting to a point where we're going to have to move uh, at least probably two of those classrooms that we have at Southern now uh, to one of our other schools next year so that uh, we can accommodate the, the, shift, the shift in enrollment pattern that we have. Uh, so we're working on the details of that. We'll make some determinations as we get closer uh, uh, to the end of the year. And other than that, uh, we have uh, some bids that we're awarding tonight, which uh, Mr. DeQuilla will comment on. And that's it for my report. Okay, uh, and just a comment on your enrollment update at Southern Boulevard. Um, that's not coming as a shock. We've been planning for years. I mean, we watch the enrollment daily. I know you watch it daily. But I think the township had reported that, the, the township committee had reported at one point that in 2015 they had 40 teardowns. In 2016 they had about 60 teardowns. Again, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that the teardowns may be, you know, empty nesters selling and larger families, school aged families moving in. So we've been watching the enrollment and accommodating. In fact, that was the first referendum to add two classrooms to each, each of the elementary schools to you know, adjust for enrollment. So we're keeping an eye on it. It's, you know, Dr. LaSousa reports on it because we do you know, watch it closely, but this has been, you know, we've, been, we've been watching enrollment for decades. It's just been continuously going up, up, up. So this is, doesn't come as a surprise, but I just wanted to put some actual, you know, more facts back to it. The teardowns play into it. The affordable housing settlement that the borough and the township are, are working through, those will impact our enrollment. So these are things that we're keeping a very close eye on and have been, you know, for decades. It's not just, oh, you know, this board's brilliant. The previous boards and the previous administrations have been keeping an eye on that um, and watching the enrollment grow. And we were just talking about the current eighth grade, which is very large. We have been watching that class since, since the second grade, which is why we, you know, use some capital reserve to expand our facilities for just that group. And then the fourth grade we're keeping an eye on. So again, it's, it, it's a concern. It, I don't know if it keeps us up quite yet at night, but it's certainly getting there. So we might need to adjust that as the administration sees fit as we, as we move forward. But again, these aren't, oh my gosh, Dr. LaSousa is dropping something on our lap. We've been tracking this for, for years and years. Does anybody else have any question on the enrollment? Um, I, just, I don't need an answer right now, but what is our current graduating class enrollment, the current um, class of 2017? Uh, I believe it's roughly 320, but I have to pull it up to uh, know for sure. You, okay, I'm just looking well, to compare to what's coming. 324, I'm correct. I just don't have it in here. 
Is that, are you concerned about getting a seat at graduation? No, I'm just going to know what's coming in and what's going out. Oh, got it, what's coming in. Just looking at the overall number. Okay, I was just curious. Did you still get those old, the, the uh -huh. report that we used to get in the package? We have the, the, you should have one in your packet now that's a updated version that we track monthly. It just has though the grade, like the grade. It doesn't have like we used to have. We can get you whatever you want. <laughs> I had the same question. <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of like the detail, yeah. um, the breakdown by sections and also by grade. I'm sorry, can we back up? You'll get anything I want. <laughs> <laughs> Within reason. I want a pony. <laughs> no, but those old reports were good for like the question that Michelle yes. just asked. Because you mm -hmm. can see, you know, what you nutrition was, what was moving in, what was moving into the middle school versus high school. So those yeah, we'd like to see the... We would like to see, yep. yeah. Okay, sorry. Thank you. We, uh, the, let the recent reports you've been getting had that, yeah. not by section, but by grade. Mm -hmm. And by grade. we substituted it this month because we do those on the 15th of every month. So yeah. since the last meeting, there had been no change. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this shows a little bit more of the, you know, historic Brett. Thank you. All right, very good. Any other questions for Dr. Lasusa on enrollment or any other topic? No? Very good. Um, Peter, you're up. Mr. DeQuilla for yeah. Business Administrator's Report. It's not often that I get to pass off, but the referendum projects were discussed uh, in the Finance Committee that uh, was held this evening at 6.30, so Mr. Arnock is going to report on those. So I have nothing else to report. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you. Anything for Mr. DeQuilla on, uh, or you could save it and he can answer questions when Sal reports. We're going to move on to the committee reports then. Personnel, Ms. Ciccarelli? Uh, personnel has not met since our last meeting. We are meeting Soon. when, Dr. LaSusa? Soon. I'm not sure. I've got to look that we, up too. We bumped personnel. We bumped right? personnel, personnel tonight, for, right? For finance, yeah. Sorry, we had a bump. Sorry I'll let about. you know. He'll let me know. Okay. Somebody will let me know. We'll let you know. Uh, moving on to curriculum, Ms. Clark. Um, curriculum has not met since our last meeting. We, sorry. we bumped our meeting, and I think we're meeting in May. I just don't know the date. May 17th. May 17th. Okay. Although you had an open curriculum meeting on March 6th, but that was you reported on that already. Um, finance and facilities. Um, Sal, would you mind um, talking in Mr. Gilfillan's place? Mr. Arnock, would you mind? No, sure. Uh, and I field Peter's punt. Finance met at uh, 6.30 earlier this evening. Uh, we discussed primarily, you know, three different topics. First, there was a, an update on the special services building. Uh, central staff met with the architect to fine-tune our needs. Um, for space and floor plans and, and to try to move that project forward. Uh, the second thing we did is we, uh, we went through the, uh, an update of the referendum projects. We actually received bids on three of those projects. One uh, was the middle school auditorium and, um, and we awarded a bid and you'll, you can see exactly the details of that in, the, in, the, in tonight's meeting agenda which is publicly posted. The second item that we received bids on, the second project, was Cougar Field Phase 1, the bleachers. Again, we awarded a bid on that as well. The details um, are, are in tonight's agenda. And then the third topic is uh, we, re we received bids on, uh, on several of the roof, the roofing projects. We did not award a bid. That will be awarded uh, by the May 1st meeting. So those are the first two things we discussed. The other thing, um, and this kind of ties into what you were talking about earlier, uh, originally Dr. LaSouza talked about a budget, uh, you know, where we had room to, to increase our budget up to 3.2%, and we were trying to keep that under 3%, and we were actually pretty successful, and we, and we had asked the administration to come back and sharpen its pencil, which they've done, and they gave us a figure, a budget, which you've seen details of at the prior meeting, where we talked about increasing the budget 2.87% for next year. Uh, we discussed in the finance meeting actually increasing that number um, by a few basis points, maybe to 2.95, but we still have to discuss it. Uh, and that's to take into account the increased cost for security and the increased legal costs and um, the potential of establishing a legal reserve. Um, which is prudent for a board in this uh, situation to do. 
So those are the three things we discussed, and thank you, Jill. Okay, very good. Uh, does anybody have any questions or additional comments regarding any of the finance items? Yeah, kind of the legal in regards to the potential. Do we have a, like a lawsuit on all that? Or is that not going to be a good Well, we've, we've, been, inc we've been incurring recently added security costs. Right, I know that. Um, and we want to be well positioned in case we have to continue to deal with uh, so matters we'll that, that, are, that are brought to us. Now we have to reserve legal fees. Okay. Well, I would like to just follow up on that. I think it's very prudent. Uh, obviously, the goal is to keep the budget as low as we can keep it to uh, reduce the impact on uh, the, the community. However, we don't want to be short-sighted. And I think it is important to build into the budget because I do foresee potential increases, uh, be it legal or be it security. And the concern is if we don't act now, later on, and if we get more expenses than anticipated, we then have to make cuts. So it, it's, are we saving money for a rainy, a rainy day? Yeah, because it'd be rather safe than sorry. Uh, and if there is an excess, then we can use that again. But I think it would be prudent to proceed in the way that the Finance Committee has recommended, uh, and I would highly recommend that the that, that be included. Uh, for no, we're not singling anybody out uh, for a, a particular topic. It's just I think it's prudent. We can't keep the budget so tight that we can't uh, respond to possible unforeseen expenses. Okay, very good. Thank you, Rich. Does, oh, Michelle? Just, um, can you um, keep us updated if there are increased expenses? Um, can you keep the board informed when they come, when they arrive, so we're aware? Or just send us the bills. Tatiana gave us the bills. Just saying. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Does anybody else have any um, questions or comments? But so I'm sorry, Sal. So the goal is for the board to. We're still crunching the numbers. We're considering it, but when we move, we're to still crunching the numbers. Okay. We haven't made 1st. a decision yet. We'll we'll make a decision by May first. But okay. I thought it, it it's it's important to inform the public that the 2.87 <clears throat> percent number that we were very proud of at the last meeting, we may have to tweak that um, appropriately uh, Appropriately okay. to be prudent. Okay, very good. Thank you. So more to follow and then May 1st again is another budget. Just, just to clarify, we did have increased security over the past few days? Today we did. Okay, thank you. Will that continue tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Excellent. <clears throat> okay, very good. Does anybody else have anything on that topic or any other finance related topic? When do we have to get to the county board? When do we submit the budget? I'm sorry, speak up. I can't, hear, I can't even hear you. <laughs> when do we have to submit the final? Look, we read oh, May, re May 1st. So, so we have to get these numbers. The public and budget hearing is May 1st. May 1st. And then the submittal is that week. Yeah, shortly. So we have to finalize the budget. You you have to adopt an, a, a final budget on May 1st. That's our next I'm sorry, meeting. Shall I no, that's it. Okay, thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, moving on to policy and planning, Mr. Connors. Uh, we have not met since the last meeting, and our next meeting is scheduled for <coughs> May 1st before the next board meeting. I it's May 1st before the next board meeting. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> what a tight calendar you keep. I expect all board members who were in my policy to be there. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, moving on to liaison reports, Mr. Connors for Chatham Borough. Nothing to report. Thank you. Ms. Clark for the township. Nothing to report as it relates to the schools. Very good. Thank you. Athletic boosters, Mr. Connors, they're meeting uh, tomorrow. They have not met since our last meeting. They are meeting tomorrow uh, night, uh, which will be following the Del Barton game. So hopefully it will be a victorious boys game. And again, I know I sound like a broken record, but the Rich. athletic boosters does an awful lot for the, for the Chatham district. The sports, they give a tremendous amount of money. Uh, so I would, again, urge one and all to please participate either in terms of donating time or money. But it is a great organization. They do a tremendous amount. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rich. Uh, moving on to the performing arts boosters. Sal, Mr. Arnoff. Uh, thank you, Jill. First of all, we'll start out with the Chatham Voices enjoyed the opportunity to engage in a video chat with composer uh, 
Rosephany Powell on March 30th. Dr. Powell is a professor of voice studies at Auburn University and has been hailed as one of America's premier woman composers of choral music. The choir has been studying and performing some of Dr. Powell's music this year, so it's a neat opportunity for them. Again, uh, as alluded to by Dr. Lasuza, we want to congratulate the cast, crew, and production team of the Adams Family, who gave outstanding performances during the run of the show. The Chatham High School Theater and Music Departments thank the community for their support and this year's production. Uh, let's see. On Saturday, April 8th, Chatham High School trombonist Sean McCarty will perform with the 2017 All Eastern Band in Atlantic City at the All Eastern Conference of the National Association for Music Education. So we want to wish Sean um, all the luck, although we know he won't need it. That's just a tremendous honor. On April 20th, the annual Chatham Middle School Jazz in the Middle Festival for Middle School Jazz Bands will be hosted by Miss Spriggs and Chatham Middle School Jazz Ensemble will take place in the CMS Auditorium. And then finally, the Chatham Performing Arts Boosters invites all new members to support the performing arts through our district schools. Their next meeting is this Wednesday, April 5th at 7 p.m. in the Lafayette Faculty Room. Excellent, very good. Thank you, Sal. The Adams family was absolutely fantastic. Yes. 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 They put on such a great show. The leads were great. The ensemble was great. I mean, Morticia was like back in my living room, 1970s. <laughs> she just channeled Morticia. But it was fantastic, and it was the final performance in that auditorium before it gets re refurbished. So it was, uh, I hope everybody took a chair on their way out to help with the demolition costs. <laughs> every, every dollar counts. <laughs> <laughs> to take a chair. <laughs> Who doesn't want an orange chair in their living room? With a, re with a red seat cushion. And a piece of duct tape across the back. Miss <laughs> um, Kenny, you have big news for the Chatham Education Foundation? Yes, I'd like to remind everyone, this is for you Rich Connors, uh, that the <laughs> Casino Royale is going to be taking place on Friday, uh, April 21st. Um, it'll be at Fairmount Country Club. Um, it is um, the their big fundraiser for the year, and um, you can get tickets at www.chathamedfoundation.org. Excellent. Thank you. That should be fun. It's a casino night, right? I, it is. It's actually tape game. They, they hired a, a firm with actual dealers, so they're going to have craps tables uh -huh. and blackjack tables. It's not just, you know, you know, my son dealing for you. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, actual professional dealers. So if you've never had a chance to play craps, for example, this would be a phenomenal time to learn. Um, and donate to a good cause, too. So it should be a lot of fun. And they have specialty beverages. Yeah, this is scotch tasting, so <laughs> in case anyone... Just throwing that out there. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Uh, recreation, Mr. Gilfillan is not here. Uh, Ms. Cronin, has PTO District Cabinet met? Nope. Meeting Wednesday at 12. Mm -hmm. Okay, this Wednesday at noon? Yep. Fantastic. Okay, excellent. Uh, okay, quick, moving right along. I'm going to skip December 19th because we still don't have the right five. I know. Rich is going to laugh at me until the end of the year. I make a motion to move uh, March 20th public and private sessions. Second. Seconded by Rich. Um, Mr. D'Aquila, would you mind? I just don't know who has to abstain. Oh, Kim. Uh, the, mi the minutes of public and private from March 20th. Mr. Arnold. Yes. Ms. Ciccarelli. Yes. Ms. Clark. Yes. Mr. Connors. Yes. Ms. Cronin. Abstain. Ms. Kenny. Yes. Mr. Valenti? Yes. And Ms. Weber? Yes. Agenda, um, minutes past 601. Okay, excellent. Very good. We're at the um, portion of our, co our meeting, which is public commentary. Um, again, just a reminder, if you would be mindful of the time, I don't know how many folks are planning on speaking. I mean, just to, it, it gives me a sense, um, just a quick raise of hand, if you plan on speaking. Oh, not too many. Okay, so, very good. So you, yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. Nobody's held to it, whether they raised or didn't raise. You can, yeah, we want to hear from you. Um, no, I don't. If you could just kind of, um, you know, self-limit yourself given the, you know, the time. I don't want to do the cards if there's only going to be, you know, five or six people speaking. Um, so if you can, you know, three, four, five minutes, that would be fantastic. Sure. Uh, again, sorry, Stacy. If you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and, that, and signing signing in. Okay. And again, sorry, Stacy. <laughs> I have to the Mr. Connors. Please don't chirp out from the back of the room. If you have something to say, please step up to the mic. Did I say that right, Mr. Connors? No chirping. So please be respectful of everybody. Um, let everybody have an opportunity to speak. We all don't have to agree. We just have to be respectful. 
Remember, we are Chatham. Sorry. I'm done. That's okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stacy Ewald. I just wanted to thank the Board of Ed, the administrators, and the teaching staff for the wonderful presentation they give on March 6th covering how religions are addressed in our Chatham school system and in our curriculum. I appreciate the great care and attention that was given uh, in, in, by our educators in thinking about how to address world history, uh, different cultures, while respecting our First Amendment rights. I have reviewed the video uh, that is being questioned by a couple of parents, and I find it personally in no way uh, compromises our First Amendment rights. Um, and particularly when looking at it relative to the overall coverage, the, the, uh, the video, the small uh, five-minute piece that's being questioned relative to the coverage of religions from K to 12 is just a very small piece. So um, I just wanted to lend my support to uh, what you're doing. I think you guys are doing a great job, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Stacy. I appreciate it. And, and just... Oh, thank you. <laughs> They're clapping for her, not us. <laughs> and just a, a quick reminder, I know that I say that this at the beginning of each public commentary. This is your opportunity as the public to address the board, to, you know, voice any oppositions, any concerns you have, any compliments you want to throw our way. Um, this is not really an, a, a, the perfect opportunity for a tremendous amount of back and forth. Again, if it's a quick question, we try to answer it. But we don't have the capability to get into a great debate. I, I say this before every public commentary session, so I just want to remind folks that the purpose of the floor is yours. It's for you to express your opinions and your comments and your concerns, and we're here to listen. So I did want to compliment you. It's Irene Britt. Um, That's unusual. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Colonial Way in the borough. Um, I, I was unprepared to make any remarks, but I just heard that the budget meeting will be May 1st, and I won't be here because I'll be cheering my son on in track. But um, I do want to compliment the Board of Education and the administration. Um, you run an extraordinarily great school system, and we all know it. Um, our family moved here 16 years ago because um, of my work, and 10 years of that I had to work 90 miles south and 85 miles north, but Tony and the kids never moved because of the quality of this school system. And um, I just want to tell you all those sacrifices were worth it because of the work that you all do collectively. Um, I support the curriculum, um, especially as outlined on March 6th. Thank you for the reminder. Um, I do uh, support the budget fully. I wish um, not more of it had to be spent on legal reserves or um, security. But be that as it may, I am happy to pay taxes in support of this great school system. And even when our son graduates this, uh, this spring, um, I will be happy to continue um, to support the school system because of the work that you do. So I just wanted to shower you with flattery um, because you guys do a great job. Keep on doing it. Students have no time limit. Um, <laughs> I guess that's. I guess that's kind of why I wanted to come talk. Oh, my name is Julia Contorno. I'm a senior um, at the high school, and I guess the, the reason why I wanted to come and talk is because you do hear so many compliments from the parents. I hope you guys feel like your um, you, all your work really pays off, and the students are really grateful for all the work that you guys do. Um, and I think sometimes because they're not here or because you may only see us in the halls at school. You might not realize how much your work resonates with us, but as someone who's been here since kindergarten, I can fully say that um, I'm leaving Chatham very proud of my education. Um, I'm excited to go to a place where I can say that I'm from Chatham and that I know that I'll be able to kind of keep up in college. And I think sometimes um, you don't realize how much we care and how much you know, we really value our education. But um, I'm so thankful that I was able to grow up in a place like Chatham where um, I never had to worry about going to school and not feeling uh, fully educated or not being able to take the classes that I wanted to take. Um, so I guess it's just one big thank you from myself and I think the student body as a whole because they're not always here. I guess the first time you've ever really seen many students was last time or not frequently enough, I don't think, for um, you guys to have these meetings about our education and for us not to come. Um, I think that that's not very good. And I, I um, would we hope that in the future people come more and um, share their support and their ideas. Um, 
because I think it's important for us to be as involved in our education as you guys are and put in as much um, in, like input to you guys so you know what we're feeling. But basically, it's one big thank you because I've been here for 12 years and I feel pretty great about it. So yeah, and one last thing is never forget the arts. It's really great. Um, <laughs> I uh, guess that's just I guess one of my favorite parts of being in the Chatham School District is um, all the arts programs I've been able to do. I started doing the uh, musicals in middle school, and it's been the most amazing thing I've ever done. Um, Mikey as well can uh, attest to that. Um, it is just such a great group of people, and I think sometimes, because there are so many athletes in our school, sometimes the 50 or so people who do the musical or the arts in general feel a little you know, sidelined, but we put in a ton of work, and I really hope that that work is also um, appreciated by the community, but I totally can tell with our two sold out shows last weekend at um, the Adams Family. So yeah, that's about it, but <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. You know, the best way to thank us is to just keep doing as great as you guys are doing. And we understand, we understand why you're not here. You guys are busy, you're, you know, you're doing homework, you're doing plays, you're doing sports. But let me just explain the social contract. When you guys are you know, older and have kids, you'll probably volunteer for positions like this as well. I know it's way too down the line, you'll think about it, but that's kind of it. Yeah. Somebody sat here for my kids and now it's my turn to sit here for the kids in kindergarten and so on and so forth. So you get a pass, so don't sweat it. But thank you for coming tonight. And you guys did great in the play, it was fantastic. It was amazing, amazing. You guys did fantastic. I enjoyed it. And Mikey, I, I, I hawk you on the, uh, the pulse. I see you on the pulse. You're hysterical. <laughs> uh, very good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hello, Mr. Carr. How are you tonight? Good evening. My name is Stuart Carr from 3 Crestwood Drive in Chatham. A uh, couple of items. Uh, first of all, hadn't heard anything about the Public Law 2016, Chapter 27, and what your reaction to that was. Just curious, any uh, comments on that? That was an act that I think on uh, August 18th of 2016. I don't know what it is. Okay, that's the Roach Motel uh, legislation. So, except for Ms. Connors, or Ms. Uh, uh, Cronin, and Mr. Gilfillan, um, the other folks, I guess, would be kind of happy about that legislation. So maybe take a look, Public Law 2016, Chapter 27. Uh, number two, going along here, again, I'm a patron of the arts too, as Mr. Arnock was, I actually was, uh, in favor of the uh, $25 million arts thing, notwithstanding the fact that I'm with sports. Um, so I do, again, applaud the whole arts thing, even though I have no, again, understanding about it or appreciation for it, um, or I should say uh, talent about it, but I have appreciation for it. Just curious about this STEM versus STEAM. Again, I want to get into this tonight, but uh, we've had STEM for a long time. I hear the word STEAM kind of coming in where arts kind of gets in with the STEM curriculum. I've got no particular problem with that, but I guess a concern I have maybe budgetarily going forward is if you hear that word, the A, coming into STEM, does that mean we can kind of be sliding monies away from direct STEM into the arts and that type of thing? I'd just like to get some clarification on that at some point in the future, because I thought STEM meant STEM, and now we're talking about STEAM with arts, again, as important as it is, I think that may be a different discipline from STEM proper. So just some clarification on that at some point, not tonight. Uh, number two, or number three, I should say, uh, we live right next to the swamp here, and I'd like to get some information going forward. I know the kids in Southern Boulevard may go there, et cetera, but in terms of the STEM uh, curriculum and the whole uh, thesis behind STEM to begin with, are we making good enough use of 8,000 acres sitting right next to us here in terms of anywhere from the kindergartners in there looking at the turtles to the 12th graders dealing with hydrology or whatever the ologies are that have to do with water and uh, uh, swamps and air and everything else. This is an incredible resource. Again, people may not be aware of it. You know, we have a national wildlife refuge literally right here. There are very few places in the country and more so in a metropolitan area like this where you got 8,000 acres of nothing, which is really why our quality of life is here. And it seems like that's an incredible resource. And the question is, can we get the science types like you did with the religion type or social studies types the other day to come in and maybe make a presentation as to why they're not doing enough or why they are doing a lot with respect to the swamp, and what can be done to kind of integrate that, if not into the curriculum, at least more uh, actively into extracurricular type stuff. Because I think it's an incredible resource. It'll get people more involved in it and more aware of it. And I think that's very important. Important. So for what that's uh, worth, if you can take a run at that at some point and come back with some kind of formal remarks. 
Then finally, and again, I, I don't usually get in the classroom. I usually stay away as my last classroom comment. Um, massive open online courses, that concept. Going forward, again, we're going to have a battles, obviously, with the unions, with the teachers, with everybody else as we get into a bigger school system with more people and money gets tighter. Is there an argument, and maybe you already have done this, and again, I apologize if you have, maybe Ms. Devlin or somebody is into these things a lot more than I am. Um, can we figure out whether there are any kind of courses we can get into? And again, Mr. Connors is aware of that with the bar review courses. You can get certain types of courses that are non-controversial, like algebra or calc or whatever it happens to be, and put people in front of a movie, okay, where you have you know, uh, university professors or whoever teaching certain courses. The kids can have access to that film stuff and then use the teachers perhaps as tutors going forward. And again, over time, and maybe just certain limited courses, again, I'm not an academician, so I'm not sure, but certain types of courses, bio, chem, algebra, whatever it happens to be, and be able to take advantage of that massive online uh, curriculum and have that more you know, integrated and more uniform and then be able to use the teachers we had to supplement that. Will that, number one, make class sizes smaller? Number two, perhaps get the kids something else better. Again, back to the bar review type stuff. When you're able to see it three or four times on your iPad or whatever, does that help the educational process? Maybe, again, it's a dead end. I don't know. But take a run at that and come back at some point to say we've looked at it. We think it's a waste of time. We haven't looked at it. We think it's a good idea. Whatever you uh, come up with on that. Okay. And I did. The reason I'm here, um, and I'll get off here in a second. I'll come back the next round. Uh, 2.1 million for central office building. A uh, couple of comments. Again, I want to make sure that people here, it's nice to see a lot of people, um, we go through and decide in January to do this. Um, was there a lot of workshop activity at PTOs and other places to say, is this the highest and best use of this money at this point in time? I understand we have an emergent situation with the special services building. I understand we have some constraints with the capital reserve accounts, et cetera. Once the money's in there, we can't use it for other purposes. But again, are people aware that $2.1 million is about 3% of the budget of $70 million going forward here? And again, to echo Mr. Heap's comments, maybe not quite so subtly uh, the last time, is that really we have to figure out whether it's the highest and best use at this point in time. I understand we need more space. The question is, as part of our facilities planning and human resource planning or whatever, can the administrator types and even these other folks that are in there maybe do more with less and then reallocate that $2.1 million into giving the taxpayers a break next year, i.e. zero-based budgeting, or use the money for some other purposes, whether it's the arts or more STEM folks or uh, mental health, whatever it happens to be. Okay, Because, again, I don't think this has been vetted enough, and frankly, the concern I have here is I've not heard any fighting amongst the board members about this expenditure, and that, frankly, concerns me a little bit. All I'm hearing is it's a great idea, it's emergent, it's the best use, et cetera, there's no back and forth, okay? And I don't know if the public cares about it. Like I said, I don't have a horse to, you know, a horse in the game at all. I'll spend the money one way or the other. If everybody thinks it's spending $2.1 million on a central office building versus other purposes, fine with me. I can care less. But I just want to make sure that the public, unlike what we did the other times, is really engaged in this before you spend that money, which is 3%, again, of the next year's budget, Okay. And a couple of other things, again, maybe Mr. Dequilla can clear us up here about these other items. Um, we keep talking about, I think it was four or five times there in January, or whenever it was with Ms. Weber's comments, about we're not going to be raising taxes with this money. Okay? Now, I'm not going to be direct about what it really says, but I will just say that it's probably something less than totally um, accurate to make that kind of comment. Okay? Uh, $2.1 million is taxpayer money. It didn't come from philanthropy. It came either from last year's budget or this year's budget. It's taxpayer money. And if we're not going to use the $2.1 million, other things equal, that would lower our taxes next year. So it's dollar for dollar a taxpayer-funded issue. Okay? The fact that we're not using it with other people's money by bonding, the fact that we're using our, only, our own money is fine, but it's still taxpayer dollars. So I think we should either retract the statement or find somebody who understands what that means instead of saying, I think, four or five or six times, this has no impact on taxes. I said it doesn't raise taxes. It raised last year's taxes because otherwise we wouldn't have had to do it in the first place. So we, we know what we're talking about and get away from the semantics. It's our money. And the fact of the matter is, if we did not put that money into the capital reserve account, 
it will be used for other purposes or it would be used to lower next year's budget, in which case it would actually lower taxes. Okay? And then the other comment I had on this uh, special services building slash central office building, which again, we said it um, didn't really happen. I took a look again back in November 2016 for my letter that I wrote to you folks the other day um, in your capital reserve or capital discussion. And it shows in there pretty clearly that the public was not in tune with the idea of having uh, professional office space. In your November 2015 document showed in here, uh, CMS STEM labs, 63% said yes. And then we say a STEM labs plus offices, 26% said yes, 57% said no. And to say that, well, this was to borrow money and raising taxes, but over here it's okay to do it because we're using our own money, is again to be a little bit subtle, disingenuous. Okay? It sounds like the public said they don't want you spending money on central office building. That's what it said in here. You asked the question, they told you no. If they'd have told you yes or it was 50% or more, then you would have had it in the referendum last year, or in 2015, whenever it happened, I guess 2016. Okay, so I think, again, we just need a little bit more, uh, you know, direct engagement with the public instead of using these kind of comments, because I think, frankly, again, it really is not the, you know, doesn't put the best foot forward, I don't think. Again, in contrast, everybody else who loves the Board of Education, which I do too, this is one small example, very mundane, where it's really not a straightforward response that we're getting. Okay, and again, the emergent, condition with special services building, all these types of things are all fine, but there are some questions that should be asked, I think, in the public, amongst the board, in front of the public, so we can actually have dialogue and figure out whether we are, in fact, doing a highest and best use with that money. Now, hopefully people will disagree with me. If everybody wants to come up here and say that $2.1 million for a central office building is the highest and best use, that's terrific, okay? But I just want to make sure, again, that we're really vetting that amongst the public and not just saying we think it's good, therefore we're going to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Park. <clears throat> nice to see you again. <clears throat> Hello, Ms. Devlin. Hi. Jane Devlin, Chatham Township. I want to begin first by a follow-up from the last Board of Ed meeting where I did request attention be made, please, to the matter of homework. Hopefully none during spring break when school ends this Friday. This is a no homework date on the calendar. I would hope and anticipate the teachers embrace this respite period for the students and for themselves, including not squeezing in homework assignments the day prior to the break and making it due one day post break. I also spoke to the principals regarding this matter in the past. And I wanted to also continue to extend my support to the Board of Ed and administration regarding the curriculum, particularly the seventh grade curriculum at the middle school. And I did want to echo what the Board of Ed president had said earlier this evening about encouraging people to gain a fuller breadth of the issues at hand by attending committee meetings, viewing the videos, or even reading the minutes, because it's not uncommon at times for remarks to be retrofitted or taken out of context to take on a different meaning. And only a discerning reader armed with full facts will recognize this. So it is reasonable, enlightened, and just fair for everyone to be open-minded on many critical topics. Facts, though, are pivotal, and to have snippets of videos Isolated phrases extrapolated from complete sentences muddle. Remarks can sometimes mislead or confuse. So exclusive reliance on one or two articles, anyone's letter to the editor, including mine, or perceptions advanced by social media commentary are not a substitute for first-hand facts and are insufficient means of arrive, arise, r arriving excuse me, at a well-informed, thoughtful opinion. And I do think some of the non-Chatham websites and newspapers and press have in fact taken out of context what's going on here at Chatham. So I think it's important for us not to lose sight of that and maybe not to lay such credence on everything these 
non-Chatham sites or broader sites are saying. And then to switch gears a minute, I would like to talk about the budget and curriculum related matters and specifically the so, uh, special services office. Although I no longer have relatives in grades K through four, it is still of concern to hear of staffing cuts that are being made at the SBS library. Supporting all things reading and our libraries is at the core of a great school. And I do hear that perhaps other program cuts may be coming down the pike and that are equally dismaying. Exposure at an early age to more than just the traditional reading, writing, arithmetic plants the seed for our youngsters to want to learn about a variety of topics. It whets their appetite so by the time they can take cycle classes in the middle school and electives in high school, they already have fine-tuned their talents and interests. The more we take away anything from the younger grades, the more likely we are to lose our academic edge. For example, the head show has been moved out of the art department at Lafayette over the years. Uh, what's next? Music, arts, humanities? So if possible, I would like to see presentations on the budget include explanation of which specific cuts would be made and why, as well as what it would take to retain the programs and services. Maybe folks would view the budget differently. The Board of Ed and Administration consistently states we spend the lowest or near lowest per pupil relative to other comparative districts. Even though we should strive for fiscal responsibility, it seems imprudent to want to save money by slashing services and programs. But that said, I don't know about last year, but this year the special ed building has been deemed unsafe and uninhabitable. The money spent in a central office building, as it's being called, can't be used for curriculum or personnel. But this building is not safe. So it doesn't seem a luxury, but a necessity to do something about it. I do not view a necessary building to mean that administration is seeking cushiony offices, but rather I view it as administration and the board is seeking to provide adequately for students of special education. Again, let's not just retrofit something. If I were a parent of a special services student, I wouldn't want to meet with the clinician in a converted restroom or a garage, as it has been explained is happening now. I would expect, both for dignity's sake and by law, the right to privacy, that sensitive records weren't laid out bare for want of space. And I wouldn't want a space rented on Main Street, as it has been suggested, in a storefront, perhaps between a pizzeria and a nail salon. We are talking about professional clinical space being needed. The Special Services Office should remain, if possible, on school grounds, not relegated to some second-class venue that is just antiquita antiquated thinking. Rather, special services, even the clinical administration offices, should be integrated on school grounds. It shouldn't be that everyone in mainstream ed gets to see the administrators here, but you, special ed kids and their parents, have to go elsewhere, downtown. Oh my, I would venture a guess that many opposing the use of funds for a special services new office site themselves have dens or home offices comfortable at their houses or work settings with windows. I would also venture perhaps many opposing the use of funds for a special services new office site don't have students in special ed. So again, this building is deemed unsafe. If the Board of Ed is also in need of more space, it does seem sensible to address that at the same time as we're considering building a new special ed office. So I would support the special services renovations or new building. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Devlin. Don't forget the homework. And don't forget the homework. <laughs> Peter, the budget presentations are posted on the website, correct? Yes, they are. Okay.
I'm sure I'll keep this short. <laughs> uh, my name is Manadi O'Connell. I'm Chatham Borough. Um, I first wanted to say thank you very much to the administration. I think you guys do a fabulous job at the schools. I know personally that your um, education teaching is very thoughtful and intelligent, and I appreciate that very much as a parent of a sixth grader in CMS. My question is that the current, uh, currently there's so much attention on CMS and there are a lot of parents concerned about the safety and the risk that their children are being put under. Um, what is the VO going to do um, should this continue? Because it doesn't sound like it's going to stop and personally I feel uncomfortable with that. Well, thank you. Dr. LaSusa, did you want to address the security? I mean, without... <clears throat> We're certainly engaging law enforcement and taking their lead. Yeah, I know what, I, I understand what you're doing, but, you know, things can, can get contentious, and that's what I'm concerned about. And we do, and there are, we, are a lot of parents who are concerned with the same issue. Under, understandably, yeah. understandably. Um, yeah. Dr. LaSusa, if you want to respond, and then I'll, <clears throat> the safety is obviously our, our primary concern. Sure. We have no reason to believe that students are unsafe. If we did, we'd make uh, additional arrangements or take further steps. Um, out of an abundance of precaution, we've had some additional police presence anytime some of us, like me personally, have been receiving messages or phone calls that are um, inappropriate. Uh, but we have no reason to believe that uh, there's any threat or um, unsafe condition uh, for our students. And if we did, we would take more dramatic measures. Okay. Do you continue to see this growing or escalating at this point? or? Mike, okay. if I could, if I could just comment. Sure. Um, I think just to add to what Dr. Lasusa said, uh, if we ever think that we're at a crossroads or we have to make a judgment, we're always going to judge. I think I can say confidently on the side of the student safety. That that's always paramount. So uh, it's a warranted concern on your part, uh, but we're always going to put the safety of the students first before anything. Uh, in any situation. So if there's any gray area, we are compelled to lean towards the safety of the students. It's, it's an excellent question and it's a serious concern. We're very much attuned to it. We have a lot of dialogue regarding it, a lot of back and forth with uh, Dr. Lasusa and his staff, and we're going to continue to monitor it. So please, uh, if anyone has any concerns regarding that, you should raise them. We're always open to discuss that and always looking for a better way to address it. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, Mike Valenti was on the Port Authority for a number of years. He brings a tremendous amount of experience. It was rather fortuitous that we were able to BS him into running and be a member of the board <laughs> uh, yeah, at this particular time. But you should also know that we're being very proactive and that okay. we're not just sitting back. And, and to answer your question, how long? As long as it's, as long as it's necessary. Uh, and we'll do, I think, the administration, uh, as well as with Jill, they're very proactive. And if they get something, they're working hand in hand with the police, be it the Chatham Township or the uh, Chatham uh, the Borough. Uh, so all reasonable steps that can be taken will be discussed and will be analyzed. But as Mike said, our number one priority is the safety of the children. Yeah, I mean, and the teachers. And and yeah, it's everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And perhaps the Board of Ed members. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't mean, I shouldn't have been a clip about that. But the safety of the children and, and, and the students in the building. Great. The Thank you. I appreciate it. And Minati, that's nothing new either. We have a terrific relationship with the Chatham Borough, Chatham Township Police Departments. We work uh, with the county when we need to. All of our principals this year and I were at the OEM working with Jeff Paul, who's the coordinator for the entire county Office of Emergency Management. Um, we have technologies that link us with the police. Uh, we have a very, uh, I think, strong, we can always be stronger, but we have a strong relationship with the police and it's a good working relationship and we're confident that we're doing everything we can to ensure the students are safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, I'm Molly Kasich. I've been here before, one time. Um, and I'm going to come back again. 
So I just want to reiterate what Julia was saying before, uh, that you have a ton, I can't say full, obviously, but you have a ton of student support, and thank you so much. Um, and, you know, all of those, all of those good things, all of that good language. Um, I am pretty disturbed by some of the things that I saw, um, some of the, like, some of the language used by, um, I mean, I'm just not going to, like, talk around it, by some of the language used by the, the firm, um, representing the opponents those women. So uh, I really hope, um, and I'm referring specifically to, to something that they said about like a false or sugar-coated depiction of um, Islam. That almost, that almost snuck past me. Uh, it's like they were like pretty subtle about a lot of things, but that is pretty blatantly Islamophobic um, and I really hope I know that right now like there's some damage control going on and like we kind of want everything to calm down but I really hope that in the future like phrases like that can be used as like as a lesson as as a teaching tool because it it addresses an important a question, a legit question that, that a lot of people have, which is, you know, like kids, when they have a not as complex understanding of things, you know, they do think, well, yeah, like, what is this religion about if, if, if the people who did 9-11 were, were Muslim? You know, it's like, it's like that kind of thing. That's a question that people have, but, but, you know, like, that can be, I think that that should be just addressed directly, and I know that we don't want to get too ugly when kids are younger, but, you know, we go pretty in-depth. Like, in the Holocaust, I think it's okay to admit that stuff gets, stuff gets really ugly sometimes everywhere, but, you know, that doesn't mean blah, 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 blah. And also, I don't have a degree, you know, so I can't tell you what you should be teaching. I just, my point is that I hope that this is used, that this is used, like, in the future to, to kind of teach as a, as a teaching tool, um, you know, even if it's not as direct, but like, I think that kids can handle it. So, uh, but again, thank you so much for everything and kind of standing your ground. Um, we appreciate it, so. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mom. Hello, um, I'm Ursula von Ridingsvard from Chatham Township, and um, I just wanted to say how amazingly smart our students are, which I think is a testament to you and all the work that you do. But I just wanted to echo um, Minati's, Minati's comments. I have a sixth grader at uh, the middle school, and I have read some of the comments on social media, and they're scary. So, I mean, I know there's extra security being brought in, but, you know, this is my kid at the school. And, you know, you say that the kids are our number one priority and you're, you know, safety first and all that, but that just almost sounds like a marketing campaign. You know, is there anything else that's going to be done? I mean, it's enough is enough. Yeah, we are working with the law enforcement. They, they, they have the threats. They are uh, advising us. We're not taking any of it lightly, and we believe that we're, we're taking every reasonable step given the information that we know. Okay. So, uh, you know, I hear you, but it's a balancing act, too. No, I know. It must be a, a, a juggle, and I applaud you guys because it's yeah. difficult. It really so, is. Jill, if I, if I could just add, Mike is the resident I, expert. If I could just add to that um, follow up. As these threats come in, uh, as Dr. Lasusa said, uh, the <coughs> local police are reviewing them, they're looking at where they're coming from, they're looking at the source, the background. I, as Rich said, I have 23 years in law enforcement. I was the deputy chief of a major police department here in New Jersey and New York, the Port Authority Police. That's one of the biggest in America. So I, I take these concerns very seriously, but we, we do have a very competent police department who's very focused on this. 
and they're digging down uh, with their partners and the school board. So uh, to give you specifics, it's not just kind of going through the motions. It's where did these things come from? Uh, is there a background with them? Is there something to be concerned about? What's going to push it to another level? And based on all of that, that's how decision, decisions are made in regard to moving forward with either the threats or the security. So you're taking a, a holistic approach to it and making sure that it's vetted properly. It's not just kind of going through the motions, if that makes you feel any better. There's a lot of, uh, there's a microscope on these uh, threats and they're followed through. And law enforcement is very in tune collectively with these issues both from a statewide level and a national level to include the federal authorities. And our local law enforcement, Chatham Township and Borough, they have constant contact with the federal agencies. I sat on the FBI uh, Joint Terrorism Task Force in the New York office uh, post 9-11. So I could tell you that dialogue occurs daily uh, and it happens and it's very, uh, very involved on both sides. So it's being done, and uh, any concerns that come uh, about will be addressed and investigated. And obviously, if there's anything that anyone in the community has a concern about beyond that, they can talk to uh, the board. They could talk to Dr. Lasusa, and we will address it. Thank you. Sure. I think the other thing, we That's have to be very cautious about what we say out loud about steps that are being taken, because then it's not truly secure. So they are being looked at every day, and we are being informed as we need to be. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Ursula. Are there any additional public comments um, for this portion of the program? There's a second opportunity for public commentary as well. Um, no? Okay. Okay, we're going to, uh, we're going to close the first section of the public commentary, Mr. Connors would like to make a, a comment about what Ursula just talked about. Um, yeah. One of the things, I mean, the points raised are, are valid, and to assure you that this was not purely a marketing ploy. Rich, just move my sure, the marketing ploy. Uh, one of the things that we can do, and I just thought about it now, would be the possible creation of some type of an ad hoc subcommittee. Uh, and I'm more than happy to volunteer Mike Valenti to be the chairman of the <laughs> uh, I would like to second that motion. Uh, to, to serve as a uh, liaison with the, uh, the two, the borough, the township, if need be the county and the, and the police, and to help out the, uh, the administration just to keep up the flow of information, you know, what maybe what things we can be doing just in terms of being proactive. and. Since I just threw Mike under the bus, I guess I'll have to volunteer to be on that dopey committee. Happy to do that, Rich. Uh, if it brings any comfort or support to what we're doing, by all means, that's a worthy endeavor. Oh, you didn't have a choice, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's not just rhetoric. It is, we take it very seriously. Just to reiterate, um, we've been on a multi-year campaign to try to harden the targets and make our facilities safer. Uh, that began in... 2013, 14 or so after Sandy Hook. That was the introduction of the security monitors that we have in our buildings, all of whom are retired police officers. Uh, we have had our facilities assessed by someone from the Department of Homeland Security in connection with the county. We've made, we've taken steps there to harden the targets and uh, ensure that the facilities are safer. This year, one of the broad goals of the district is to move toward the Alice model, uh, which is away from the, you know, sort of hide and be quiet model of uh, school shooter, uh, you know, scenarios and move towards a more active, dynamic decisions made in each individual classroom model. Uh, like I said before, we're in the process now of working with the county OEM on uh, a number of initiatives that also uh, sort of strengthen the ties that we have with law enforcement. So I think it's a great idea to have the, the subcommittee. Uh, it's something that we discuss almost at every single administrative meeting that we have. And um, it would be great to, to, to keep that going. And if we want to be more public, it's a dynamic that is tricky because you should, you know, you're, you're advised to try to keep everything close to the vest. Um, but obviously you want to reassure people that we're 
doing everything we can to try to be as safe as possible. Thank you, Dr. Lucia. Oh, sure, certainly. I know I'm not really a part of the public, but I mean, I am, but um, I just want to give a huge congratulations to somebody who's out there that um, comes to pretty much every one of our board meetings. Um, Mario Kolker got an unbelievable award in education, and she is a teacher at Morristown High School. She's part of our Chatham Education Foundation, and uh, she was awarded a very prestigious award in um, engineering education, and really unbelievable. So if you haven't heard about it, um, it's the Northrop Grumman Foundation Excellence in Engineering Education Award. Um, it is awarded, um, one award will be presented annually to a K-12 public school science slash technology teacher with at least three years of teaching experience. And uh, just really kudos to you. Amazing. Oh, nice. Congratulations. So if you come to enough board meetings, we'll give you a shout out. <laughs> Except for you, Mr. Carr. We will give you nothing. Excellent. Well, thank you. Uh, no additional public commentary. We're going to move on to our regular agenda. And then we'll, there's another opportunity if anything strikes your interest. We usually go through these fairly quickly. Um, these agendas are posted on Friday, so we're able to go through them over the weekend and um, take a look at them. So if it appears that we go through them quickly, it's because we've already had the entire weekend to look at them. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to move on to personnel. Ms. Ciccarelli, would you mind moving the personnel items? I would like to move um, agenda items A1 to A12 on our regular agenda. Second. Does anybody have any additional questions? For Congratulations to Mary Beth Geigel, uh, uh, one of the few teachers in the district that has pretty much taught every single kid who's come through the system for 25 or 30 years. So congrats to her. Does anybody have any additional questions or comments for Dr. Lasusa or Ann or Ms. Grant? Kim, did you have a question? No, you're good. Okay, very good. Mr. DeCola, would you mind? Sure. Yes. Mr. Chicarelli. Yes. Ms. Clark. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Ms. Kelly. Yes. Ms. Galati. Yes. Ms. Weber. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Uh, moving on to finance and facilities. Uh, Mr. Gilfillan is not here, so Mr. Arnock has agreed to stand in his place. Uh, I would like to move finance facilities action items B1 through B13. Um, also adding addendum items 14, 15, and 16. But before we do, I would just like to mention a few donations um, right, right, that right, seem right, pretty. Pardon me? Have to get a second first. Yeah. Second. Second. <laughs> second. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd I was, like to, that was be, painful. <laughs> I'd like to talk about a few quick donations, if you don't mind. Chatham High School PTO donated $56,000, actually $56,232 to the school district, which is amazing. It's going to be used to purchase carpet, uh, shelving, counters, chairs for the library, library media center summer renovation. So th a big thank you to them. Uh, there is a sailing club donation in the amount of $350, which is going to be used for sailing team transportation. There is a $2,000 donation from the Society for Science and Public and Regeneron, which will be used to support the high school science research products. There's a Lafayette School PTO donation in the amount of $3,000 to support the LAF Library Media Center as well. And then if you don't mind, uh, let's see, there's an SBS PTO donation uh, for library books, for a bench, for various playground supplies, but totaling $3,600. I felt these need to be acknowledged. Anyway, moving action items B1 through 16, including the addendum items. Excellent. Very good. That's impressive. Thank you so much, Sal. Does anybody have any questions on any of the finance items? I know we went up in fairly great detail earlier on the committee report. Any additional questions for Peter? No. Seeing none, Mr. Crow, would you mind? Agenda item B1 through B16, Mr. 
Carney. Yes. Ms. Ciccarelli. Yes. Ms. Clark. Yes. Mr. Connors. Yes. Ms. Cronin. Yes. Ms. Kenny. Yes. Mr. Valenti. Yes. And Ms. Weber. Yes. Agenda items pass 8-0. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Uh, moving on to curriculum. Ms. Clark, would you mind? Yes. Um, I move action item C1 and 2 for vote. Second. Mr. Connors, second. Excuse me, there's agenda item C3 on the Oh, there's agenda. an agenda item item C3. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. It's on the back of the agenda. Okay, I see it now. It's on the back. Sorry. Thank you. And C3. Does Mr. Connors' second still count? Yes. Okay. Just checking. He's, he's like E.F. Hutton when he talks, everybody has to listen. Yeah. Everybody has to listen, except for Sue. Excellent. Very good. And a color run is when the students run and powder gets tossed on them. It's like a big That's thing. right. Is that a big are they thing? Gonna, are they going to open that to everybody? It's a big thing. Oh, it is fun. That's good. The color runs are huge. So will they open that to the whole community? I think this is a homegrown color run. It's not like oh, the, like the national color run where 30,000 people will be Let's on Let's let the students go first and see how it goes. It'll be a lot of fun for the kids. It's it's sucking in baby powder. Like anybody with paint. All right. Excellent. No additional questions on curriculum? No. Mr. Agenda item C1 through C3, Mr. Arnold. Yes. Mr. Chickarelli. Yes. Yes. Mr. Connolly. Yes. 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 Excellent. Very good. We have no policy items to discuss in board business. We do have to discuss the calendar. Um, Dr. Lasusa, this is the one snow day that because you jinxed us that last time when we had three snow yes. days. Yes. Correct. Okay. So now we only have one snow day. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Just just wanted to. I was actually going to text you. <laughs> we yeah, it totally, it it totally jinxed us. So the choice is to put it um, around Memorial Day like we typically do, the Friday mm -hmm. before. That's what we usually do. Okay, and I think that's what folks schedule or count on. Mm -hmm. May 26th. Um, Correct, May 26th. Friday, May 26th. So do you need us to, does, is everybody okay with following standard when we have snow days to add it back to Friday of Memorial Day weekend? Yeah. yeah. Okay, very good. So, Peter, do you need us to make a motion on this, or, or are we going to redo the calendar and then resubmit the calendar? No, we would do the, the motion now because we won't have another meeting till May 1st. Okay, but before we make a motion on that, there was a discussion on um, uh, no, uh, creating early dismissals yep. an additional at the K-8 level to mm -hmm. have it match the high school calendar. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate yes. on that? Sure. I didn't do it justice. It's okay. So the typically the last five, six, usually six days of the high school year, we've had an early dismissal. So a half day basically at the high school level uh, to accommodate for final exams and just end of the year routines and graduation rehearsals and whatever. Um, so we've scaled that back a little to only four days this calendar year to reflect some of the changes in the assessment structure at the high school. And a couple of people over the you know, the course of, of recent months have raised the, the question of whether it might make sense if we, uh, in addition to the final day of the school year where we have a half day for our K through eight students to do that also on the second to last day. And the reason for that is that, um, number one, the eighth grade celebration continues to be that night. So it would kind of give the eighth, the middle school the same um, ability to orchestrate that ceremony as the high school has when they have their half day on the last day and we have the graduation ceremony in the evening. Uh, if we did the middle school and the high school, then it probably makes sense to just make it consistent for the whole district. Uh -huh. um, and then there are a lot of celebrations and kind of special events and things that take up time in that final week. And some of the principals would like to look at maybe trying to move them to those final two days. If we knew that the last two days were going to be half days, we could you know, maybe concentrate some of the, um, you know, some of those special events so that they're not as disruptive to the regular flow of school. Um, and then lastly, of course, it gives our teachers a little bit more time the, the, you know, the day before the last day, which is oftentimes chaotic and people are saying goodbye and doing all kinds of things. So, and they're, uh, they're it's closing a, out their grade book too, correct? Yeah, they're doing, they're closing out classrooms, grade books, all that kind of stuff. So it was, it was just a thought, um, since we're amending the, ca the calendar to reflect the additional snow day, I thought I'd bring it up as a possibility. So it would be Thursday, Friday, uh, 22nd, June 22nd, June 23rd, 
we'd have an abbreviated day both of those days as opposed to only the 23rd. I, I, is, I, just a quick question before I tap Michelle, because she's the teacher in the room. I just wanted to get her opinion on something. But the eighth grade celebration on the 22nd, is that at Menon or is that at... Um, that will be at the high school campus? again, because I'm uh, sorry, at the middle school again, because we are crowded out of okay. Menon by other high schools. Okay, I wasn't sure if somebody dropped out that we were able to sneak in. No, no such luck. Okay, so the eighth grade celebration will be on the 22nd at, back at the middle school. Um, Michelle, do you have any comments about the half-day proposal? Yeah, I, I think teachers can always use time at the end of the year. It's very hectic, and there's a lot you're checking off in addition to, you know, closing out with your students. So I don't think any teacher is going to tell you, you know, that that's not a good idea. Um, I think it's, it's valuable time, you know, and able to get records done and whatever needs to get done to close out the year. Um, just how would that impact our kindergartners um, in terms of the last few days of school, our AM, PM kindergartners, would they... You know, if we have a half day, you know, in terms of them closing out. So that's my only question. I know that's one little pocket of our, but maybe something needs to look, to, you know, so they can close out appropriately too. I'll talk to the principals on that. Typically, um, I think I should know this, but obviously we have an unexpected, unanticipated right. closure. Yeah. We one one session takes place um, and the other does not. Okay. But on days when we have planned um, early dismissals, which I think are only right now Thanksgiving day before Thanksgiving, day before December break, and then the final day of the year, they finagle the, right, they finagle it so right. they both meet. But I could be wrong on that. I'd have to defer to the principals okay. and all the parents in the room that have been through that already and can remember. Okay, thank you. Is there any other negative impact to the students to creating half day that I'm not thinking of? That's why I picked on Michelle because she's an oh, educator and a parent with a K to eight. So I'm not, I'm out of my sandbox here. When you, you know, those last couple of days of the year are tough to, to have the students to, you know, focused and, and rocking and rolling. So I think that's one of the reasons the principals at that level can envision trying to use those two days for special events that, and celebrations, whether they're, you know, writing portfolio days or, um, you know, field days or whatever, whatever it might be. We can't obviously group everything in the final two days. Right. But if they knew that those two days were going to be abbreviated, they'd make an effort probably to group as many of them as they could. Okay. Because the students are, are, you know, their heads are in different places by June 22nd. By the June 22nd date. Um, does any other board member have any questions about the proposal? Again, there's two qu two proposals, the Memorial Day Friday and the half day for K-8 to on June 22nd, which would be the second to last day of school. Kim, you're good. Rich? Mm -hmm. Michelle, a lot of... No. Okay, so what you need from us is a proposal, or a, 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 I'd like to make a resolution to amend the calendar to have the Friday before Memorial Day a full day off, students and staff, and June 22nd a half day early dismissal rather for the K to 8. I need a second? I'll okay. second. Somebody second it. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Peter, is that good? Do you need something else? Yes, for us? Eight nothing. What's that? Eight, eight, eight nothing? nothing? Okay, very good. Um, do we have any additional board business? Before people bolt, um, we have our second public commentary, but we also have an executive session, correct, Mike, after this? I, I leave that to you. I didn't know if you wanted to discuss anything further. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I, we are having a public, um, I'm sorry, an executive session after this. It won't be long. Action will not be taken. Um, we can make it a standing meeting, so we're not <coughs> too late. Um, but yes, if stick around, we will have executive session to discuss a legal matter. Um, any additional board business that I'm not seeing not on the table? Okay, very good. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Rich. It's, it's, it's not board business, and, and I apologize, because uh, I know most of us want to get home and see the game. Uh, last week, or the last March, I guess the last meeting we were here, there was a, a gentleman who came and spoke at the very end of it, and if you go back, I, I don't know if he, he made the tap or the other publication. I, gonna be, I, I think he was Indian descent, and um, he stood up, and it was very spoke very quietly. And it turned out most of the people that spoke were here for they ten years, five years, fifteen years. And when he stood up, spoke very quietly, very softly, and he said something to the extent and I should have complimented him when he said it, but he said something to that he's been here for eighteen years. And at that point, he turned out and looked at the uh, audience and said. Welcome to my town. I tell you, I was, 
I was pretty blown away by that, and not that anyone really cares about that, but I, I thought it was a great comment and a great statement. Uh, we're in a position right now, I don't think any of us wanted to be here, but we can turn this into a good thing, and I think with the people showing up the last couple of meetings, it has. Uh, things could get heated over the next foreseeable future. Uh, and to kind of go back to the young lady, that what she, young girl, what she saw in the paper, it can get pretty inflammatory. Rather than pushing ascend and throwing fuel on the fire, send something constructive. You know, I, I, I'm, I ble I'm, I'm just concerned. Let's keep this civil. Uh, discourse is good. It really is. I mean, every topic is good. I'm actually glad we're talking about this because perhaps many of us are now looking into uh, the Muslim faith more so than we ever had, which I think is a great thing. Uh, but, you know, let's build bridges. Let's not throw hand grenades. Okay. Sorry. Very good. Welcome to my town. I've been blown away by that comment. And you can watch it on the March 6th video over and over again. Just another public information set <laughs> comment. Uh, we have an opportunity, or second opportunity rather, for public commentary. Again, same rules apply. You know, if you would sign in. Your, uh, Mr. Kars wants to come up. Again, not a, um, your opportunity to present to the board. Thank you, students, for coming. Take care. See you later. Hi, I'm Melissa Cavallone from uh, the Chatham Township. There was one point um, a couple of meetings ago, a gentleman stood up and was asking about potentially renting office space as opposed to building a new building for special, uh, special ed and uh, the district offices as well. Um, as a parent, I've been stewing over this for a little while. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, as a parent, not necessarily a parent of a special ed student, but just as a parent, something that perhaps that gentleman hadn't thought about, and maybe some of the people in the room haven't really thought about, is um, the confidentiality of the records for the special services kids. It's really, really critical. I would really not like to see those records housed in a building that's anything other than a municipal building or a district building. It, to me, just opens up one more potential avenue for privacy to be invaded. So I commend the board and the administration. You've always been very fiscally prudent. I don't feel like that $2.1 million is excessive at all. I think it's really what we need to do. The building is damaged. It can't be used. I understand that the current space, is, space here is less than ideal. So I'd really like to see those, those records for everyone kept private and, and safe. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, Stuart Carr, again, again, staying in the mundane uh, building. Uh, is there any thought to having some kind of a survey like you did with the uh, uh, building in 2015, again, to go to this issue here? That may well be the highest in use of the $2.1 million. Again, I'm indifferent on the merits. It just seems to me that I haven't heard enough of the back and forth about is that the highest and best use. Question is, again, with the special services, that was really driven again by the special services building becoming problematic, which arguably could have been seen, you know, years in advance instead of just all of a sudden it becomes emergent. Again, if we can just make sure that we're making the highest and best use out of this, and is there any other way to use that money? If, in fact, we're going back and forth and you have gauged the public, and there are a lot of PTO meetings or workshops or whatever else that I'm not aware of, that's fine. But again, it is a big number, you know, $2.1 million. Uh, the public did say we don't want it spending on buildings. Uh, again, notwithstanding the issue that the special services is different. But again, I just implore you to get some public input. And if you could do that formally, that would be appreciated through a survey, informal or otherwise. And presumably the people who are going to answer the survey most likely are people in the district anyway, who are the ones who have the, the most skin in the game. Again, I'm just a taxpayer. I'm indifferent where the money goes. Okay. But I think, again, somebody has to have the counter argument to um, spending $2.1 million. So 
So if you can, again, consider that and have some public comment after as to what you anticipate doing on that and what steps you have taken to gauge the public about the pros and cons of the special services dimension, the uh, clinical administrative dimension, et cetera, so we can at least have that as part of the discussion. And also, again, get away from the idea of it's not a taxpayer-funded item. In fact, it is. And we could just <coughs> excuse me, clarify that uh, once and for all. That would be appreciated. Thank you. Are there additional public commentary? Going once. Going once? No, twice? Okay, well, very good. Thank you, everybody, for attending. I appreciate your feedback, comments. Thank you for coming out. I make a motion to close the public meeting. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Saying nope. Passes 8-0. Um, again, if you could just stay for a quick session. Yeah.